So in our last video, we took a look at the motion blocks to see how you get a sprite moving uh, around the screen and on the stage here. And today we're going to take a look at the looks blocks. But before we get into those, I wanted to mention that projects need to be saved. And so what you'll notice up at the top of your project when you start one, it'll be untitled. And it might be untitled 1, 2, 20. In this case, I'm 26. Um, but I go in there and I just tap in and highlight the title and I can rename the title and I will call this um, Scratch Cat. You can name it anything you want. And once you hit enter, uh, you now have a project that is saved into your stuff. And so to get back to anything that you've already been working on, you just go to your username up here and you select My Stuff and that will show a list of all the things that you're working on. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the looks blocks. And remember from last time we had, we brought in one looks block last time, which was that next costume. And to demonstrate that right now, what you're seeing is the cat uh, is switching between its two costumes in order to make it look like it is running. If I go to costumes, you'll see that the cat has two different costumes currently. You can add more if you like, and uh, you can change these ones just like any other paint program or graphic design program, you can um, change the way a, a sprite looks. And we'll get into the actual um, whole idea of graphics and um, design of sprites in another video. But for now, just know that there are two costumes for this particular sprite. Well, in addition to making the sprite switch to different costumes, there are a few different things you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this here for now, but I wanted to introduce a couple of blocks from the look section. So you can have a sprite speak to the audience. For example, say hello for two seconds if I tap on that. He, he brings up a speech bubble for two seconds that says hello. And of course, as, as may be obvious, but you can change this to anything you want. My name is Scratch Cat. Maybe put it for three seconds. I do this. Okay. Um, and as we get in deeper into Scratch coding, I'll show you some really creative ways to make the say uh, code block work. If you were to have it, um, th this is designed to be spoken for three seconds, and then it disappears. So if I were to just put it into this block here without any seconds duration and just click it, it just stays up there. So you'll have different reasons for wanting something to be said for a little bit and then go away versus something to be said um, and stay there, staying there until you, until you do something different. All right, um, I'm going to add another one. Let's hit stop. I'm going to add another one for the think bubble. And so I'll just hit that once and you'll see he's shows him thinking for two seconds. So again, the think for a few seconds or the think permanently. Uh, again, this is a similar to the say code block, but shows a think bubble instead of a speech bubble. All right, we saw the next costume, which switched back and forth. If you have multiple costumes and you're switching from, let's say, costume one to costume seven, that's where this, this code block comes in handy. So right now I only have two costumes. But if I were to come in here and make a third, let's just say I, let me just paint one for now. I'll paint a third that uh, looks really simple. I'll just do something like this. And actually I'm going to bring it down a little bit to the bottom of where he was. And so let's just do switch from costume one to costume three. Okay. And so you can jump using this code block, you can jump to different costumes for different purposes. Um, you might have a planet that blows up, or you might have a character person that changes costumes um, from one from one scene to the next. Or you might have characters that uh, change their stance if they're dancing, for example. So you can, you can either make new costumes or you can import costumes from the library of costumes that are available already in Scratch. And as you can see here, there are a number of different ones. Look at this bear. 
So the bear has a, a multiple costumes to make it look like you can walk and stand, um, things like that. Okay, I'm going to hit back. For now, we'll leave it just at these costumes, just for the examples for today. Okay, the same can be done for backdrops. So although this, this code block right now is sitting inside the sprite, um, the cat sprite, so I can put this here, meaning I can have the cat make the backdrop change, or I can actually go to the backdrop itself, and I can change the backdrop here. Okay, so for now, I'll stick with the cat, just to, for sake of consistency, just to show you what backdrops look like. And I'm going to go into the backdrops for a second. In the backdrops, under the backdrops tab, you'll see that just like we added new sprite costumes, you could add new backdrops. So I'm going to go ahead and choose from the list of what they have here. Let's put him in the Arctic. Okay, and I'm going to drag this to the top. So he'll start off in the Arctic. And then maybe, um, you know, you click something and he goes into a different environment. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to change it to the beach. And I'm going to just get rid of this blank one for now. So now we just have the Arctic and the beach. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my code. And I'm actually going to go to the cat sprite for now. Uh, I'm going to have all of this happen in the cat sprite just to make it easy. So let's just say I wanted to start with backdrop one. If I tap on that, that means that the Arctic backdrop will appear. If I change it to Beach Malibu and I tap on it, it switches over here. So this hopefully will just start your imagination um, rolling in terms of for example, creating different scenes in a project, or if you're doing a game to create different levels. So each level could have its own backdrop. And of course, hopefully this should make sense, but the next backdrop just goes through the different backdrops that currently exist. If you had 10 of them, it would flip through 10 of them, um, and it just goes through them in order. Okay, so that is the switching of backdrops. I'm going to put those back for now, and we're going to go into the next set of code blocks in the looks category. We have a change by 10 and a set to a certain percentage. So change by 10, this is, again, because we're in the cat sprite, it's going to change the cat by a unit of 10. It just keeps growing. If I were to hit a negative on there, hopefully that makes sense, it just goes smaller instead of larger. And then you have a set size that could um, permanently set it for a certain size. So let's say 50%. Okay. And I use this sometimes at the very beginning of a project because, and as you see here, I have it set like that. I do this because maybe a character that exists already, I want that character to be smaller in this scene and so I'll set them to 50% or whatever percentage it is at the beginning of the project and then they will stay that way until I choose to change them to some other other size and so still works oh but now look as I'm going to next costume look at the purple costume because it is costume number three is coming through there so that's a good illustration of how adding a new costume affects this next costume code block okay and we'll put them back for now. Uh, the other uh, look effects here, I'm going to do a change a color. And this is a really interesting, changing the effects uh, it is quite varied. Let me, let me set him back to 100 so that you can see this here. So color effects changed by 25%. Change the color of the, the, the main color of the cat. So watch what happens here. So he goes from yellow to these different color tones as I tap on the change color block. Now that's just one way of, of changing an effect of the cat. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to grab this next block here, which is clear it. So I'm going to clear it and bring it back to what it was. And I'm going to show you what else is here. So there's fisheye. See that? If you've ever seen a fisheye 
lens on a camera, it kind of makes everything everything that you're looking at fit into view, but it really distorts the view, so that's what fisheye does. I'm going to reset that, and I'm going to choose, oops, I'm going to choose Whirl. So you can see what Whirl's doing. I'm going to choose Pixelate. So for whatever reason, you might have these different effects want to take place on a particular sprite for for something that's going on in your animation or your game or your digital story. Mosaic makes many of them. Okay, that's kind of cool. Brightness, brightness and ghost are similar, but brightness basically changes the lightness of it um, until it's entirely white. And ghost makes it sort of fade into the into the into the background so that it's no longer there. Ghost effect is great if your particular character or sprite in your project needs to disappear. Okay. And by the way, this is a good time for me to introduce one more control. Uh, let's use the repeat block right near the forever block there. And if I wanted this to repeat, let me reset him first. And if I wanted the ghost effect to change by let's say 10% 10 times let's see what happens Do you see that so he he disappeared I'll do it slowly this time if I did it this way so he disappeared 10% at a time and you do that 10 times and he's a hundred percent disappeared but you can do it all at once using a repeat 10 times 10 percent here we go okay he disappears all right uh, so those are the looks blocks let me clear graphic effect okay and then just like we did with the movement of the sprite by 10 and then setting the movement to a certain effect you, you have both of those here so for everything that you can do change you could also do set Okay, so the this is just like a certain you you pick the percentage. So let's say I wanted to change the the brightness by fifty percent. I would do that, and that just immediately changes the brightness rather than going through a gradual change. Okay, and then two really important um, blocks that I use actually quite often in my projects, and that's show and hide. Show and hide is great when you want to, one, get rid of a character in a scene, or when you're changing scenes and you want all the characters to disappear, um, you can use hide, and it makes that character vanish, okay? But sometimes you also want a character to appear maybe partway through a project, and so what you would do is you would start it off as hidden, so that it would be gone until a certain point, then you make it show up. So the show and hide are very effective for allowing you to, to get characters or sprites in and out of a scene really quickly. Uh, and just remember, though, that um, let's say you make a character disappear, you'll want to make sure that you show them at the beginning of the next time the person comes into your project or a person comes in to view your project. So always use the show and hide carefully um, and, and purposefully. Okay. Uh, the next ones here are uh, related to the fact that you might have more than one scratch um, sprite on your screen. So uh, at this point, I'm going to actually go ahead and make a new sprite. I'm going to come in to pick a sprite. I can do a few things. I can upload a sprite, which is a you know a picture or an image from somewhere on my computer. Um, I can, <laughs> the surprise one kind of just gives you one. Um, I can paint my own or uh, I can choose one from the library. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm going to pick some other animal. I'll choose the mouse here. Okay, so notice that when I have the mouse, oh, actually it's calling it cat too. I'm sorry, that's not a mouse. That is a cat that is uh, viewed from the top. So that's cat too, that's fine. Um, notice that when I'm viewing the cat, I have nothing in my scripting area. Okay, I go back to sprite one, which is my original cat, and 
I have the code that I wrote there, but if I click on cat2, there's nothing there. So this is what allows you to put two sprites or a hundred sprites in a project and have them work together. So look at this current cat right now. He is sitting on top of my original scratch cat. So if I, in his coding area, if I say go to and I say back layer and I click on it, he now moves behind my scratch cat. Okay, if I do that again, I'm going to bring him to the front, move him here, and it now moves him to the front. So you may have, for any many number of reasons, a need to get one character to be behind another. And that's what you're going to use these different code blocks for. And notice how there are two of them. That one's already duplicated, but there are two of them. One is to move uh, front and back, and the other one is if there are multiple layers, you can say move forward one layer or move forward three layers, depending on how many sprites that you have going. All right, and that's all for the looks section. There are some um, parameters here that I'll cover in another video, just like when we were in looks. I didn't cover these ones either. Now, those will take place when we start looking at operators and a few other different code blocks that are a little bit more advanced. So just know that I'll be getting to those in a future video. And that's all for looks.